let's make a couple of improvements to this. First, let's think about what if I didn't want 50 objects? What if instead I wanted 100 or maybe 20? If I wanted to change the number of objects, the way the code's written right now, I would have to change a lot of numbers. I would have to change all of these numbers, and I would have to change uh, what's the largest location number my loop goes to, uh, and same thing for this loop. And you see it might be easy if I were making all those changes to forget to change one of those numbers. Like maybe I had changed all these ones and this one, but then I'd forget to change the one down here. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a named constant. This number 50 happens a lot all over the program, and it has a special meaning. It's the number of objects. So let's create a final int. Final means that the number can't be changed while the program is running and it'll be called num objects, and I'll make it 50. So now, whenever I would use 50, instead I'll say num objects. And maybe that's a bad name uh, for you to recognize, but you should choose a name which makes it obvious what it's going to be about. So now I can say, okay, I'm making a new array that's what, however many objects I want. And here I'm going to loop all the way up to the number of objects. And here I'm going to loop all the way up to the number of objects. So if I run it again, you'll see we've got 50 objects. But now I just have to change the number once. So if I make this 10, now all of a sudden I only have 10 objects. And if I make it 100, now I've got 100 objects. So that's the first improvement. The second improvement, maybe it's not an improvement, it's more of an experiment is rather than have everything be random all the time, sometimes it's nice to have patterns. So let's create the balls according to a particular pattern. So here before, here's where I'm assigning all the starting values to my x coordinates and my y coordinates and my speeds and all the rest of it. So let's make an integer called, let's just call it x and it'll start at zero. So instead of assigning random x coordinates, let's do this will set the x coordinate to whatever x is, but then right afterwards we'll add a certain amount to x. So the next time we go through the loop, the next ball's x coordinate will be 10 over. So let's see, how many do I have? 100, so let's make there be 60. And here we go. Well, nothing obvious is happening. Um, let's try to make it a little bit more obvious. I think it still looks random because we have random y coordinates as well. So let's change the y coordinates so that they're all 10 to start out with. And the balls will separate from each other because they're all going at different speeds. So here we go. Well, that's still not the best. I want a very beautiful looking pattern. So let's do this. Let's have them increase by 60 every time. And let's have there be maybe 10 of them. And let's have the speeds increase also. So rather than be random, we'll have each speed be, we'll start the speed at one. And we'll say speed equals speed plus one. So the speeds will start slow and get faster. There we go. That's the kind of thing I had in mind. So you can experiment more with this kind of thing if you want to. Um, but it just pays to remember that sometimes having patterns is a little bit nicer than just making everything random.